Hey, Fire supporters, welcome to Touchline TV. I'm your host, Brendan Hannon. In this month's edition, we sit down with interim head man, Frank Klopas. We catch up with Manchester United legend, Gary Neville, throwing out the first pitch at the White Sox game. But first, let's take a gander at the Fire's first ever practice in the community at Benito Juarez Community Academy. Coming at you now on Touchline TV. Before the Fire hit the road for three matches away from Toyota Park, the team took their game into the community. Benito Juarez Community Academy welcomed the fire into Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood, where the men in red participated in a full training session before mingling with fans and signing autographs. It's important not only for our team but for our organization to, uh, you know, get out in the community, expand our brand, and then obviously, uh, you know, touch our fans and, and, and give them an intimate experience to watch us practice. Fans took part in activities, giveaways, and packed the sidelines, displaying their loyalty for their favorite fire players. It's great. It's, we need to bring people. By, uh, we need to bring people by in order to support the team, to be there for them, and it's great. We need some supporters. A lot of uh, young stars out here could be watching and learning a lot, and they can also be inspired and see what they can do by the time they be uh, growing up and see what could uh, they could develop as grown players in the future. They look at these guys, and now they have something to shoot for. They 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 have goals in their lives. You know that one day that you know my dream is to play for the Fire and. Uh, you know, when, when they see the players and they get to meet them, and I think that dream becomes more of a reality. They feel it, that it's there, that it's reachable, it's uh, attainable. The organization plans to hold one additional practice in the community during the 2011 season, where players and coaches will continue to build relationships with the Fire Faithful. There's a part of, you know, watching uh, professional athletes on TV, uh, you know, where you dream, but uh, when you really get to watch them play, uh, in person and get autographs and uh, you know kind of mingle uh, it's great you know it, it gives them a, a sense of perspective and uh, hoping to dream big. I see them practice it was cool and like well the stuff that they do we do that too and when when we were practicing with my team we went to go when they practiced once. Check out chicago-fire.com for all the details regarding the fire's next practice in the community. In late May, the fire parted ways with head coach Carlos De Los Cobos and named technical director Frank Klopas interim head coach. On the weekend, Klopas helped lead the fire to a 1-0 victory over the Columbus crew in front of over 400 fire supporters at Crew Stadium. I had a chance to sit down with Frank and talk about what he would impart upon a player, his favorite Chicago soccer memory, and what he orders at Greek Islands. Let's take a look at my sit down with Frank Klopas now. Welcome back to Touchline TV. I'm your host, Brendan Hannon. I'm here with Fire Interim Head Coach, Frank Klopas. How you doing, Frank? Fantastic. <laughs> Good to hear. You're now the Interim Head Coach of the Fire. If you could impart one thing on a player, what would it be? I think uh, the most important thing, or one of the most important things in, 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 in a player or in sports is to be able to have confidence. Uh, and uh, that's the one thing I've always uh, felt that as a player when, when I had confidence from the coach and he instilled that in me, uh, how much uh, better that I was able to, to perform on the field. So I think if there's one thing, and I try to do this uh, every day with the players, is just to give them confidence, give them belief in themselves uh, in their abilities and obviously help them along the way where they're developing certain things which that will enable to uh, for them to step on the field with more confidence. I think that's the one thing that uh, if you can give to a player, it would, would help uh, uh, in a big way. During your, your short tenure as uh, the interim head coach, you've, you've stressed preparation being one of the, the big things with this team and, and being prepared going into every match uh, and, and ahead of every training. So in the five minutes before you, you walk out of the tunnel, what are you thinking? Just thinking about every little thing that uh, you know, to make sure that we've covered everything, you know, and, uh, you know, and then at that time, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, you know, I know how my team is, is going to be and step on the field because I know the work that we've done during the week, you know, so I'm just thinking of every little thing, what could happen, how, what we need to do to push the game, if this thing if this happens, if that happens, just everything's gone, kind of going through my mind at that time before because, you know, I know how we're going to approach the game, how we're going to step on the field, so, uh, you know, I'm just thinking I had to see, uh, depending on how the game goes, you know, different moves that I can make. 
And then obviously when the game starts, the first 10, 15 minutes, I'm just focusing on, on the other team just to make sure that uh, the things that we've addressed and we've expected out of, out of them, and uh, we're seeing the same way and their approach to the game hasn't changed. I know you're a bit of a superstitious guy. Can can you tell us some of the, some of your superstitions? Are there certain things you don't change? Are there certain things you do change? What are some of your your main superstitions? <clears throat> no, probably you know when I wear something and then you know we have a good result. I'm not going to change that. You know I don't change that. Um, if I do certain things, you know, uh, you know day of the game and you know I kind of write everything down and stuff like that and. I try to do the same things. It's it's a little bit crazy, but it's just you know just uh, how I am and how I've been even as a player, you know. And uh, yeah, it just goes back just you know how I prepared through the whole week, you know, all those little things. And I think it's always important to look back, you know, even you know from a team, you know, from a, from our team. When you see the team, you know, really sharp one week, you got to go back and see what we've done the last couple of weeks and just to you know yeah. just to, just to see you know maybe you can find a little angle that, that that helps us so we can expect the same suit going into saturday probably my wife won't be happy but you know <laughs> I, I just i just hope the coaches don't mind next to me either <laughs> you've been involved in chicago soccer for so long you know you you've played here you, you grew up here in a sense can you give me your favorite chicago soccer memory there's there's quite a, f a few i mean obviously as a fan you know, I remember when, when the Sting won the, Super, uh, the Soccer Bowl in 81. The game wasn't televised, you know, so I was listening on the radio. And I was in, uh, at home and when Rudy Glenn scored uh, uh, the shootout and then they had to make the save to win it, so I was jumping up and down. Uh, very excited about, uh, obviously, the, my home team, you know, winning, you know, being uh, the champs. And obviously, I'll never forget when I signed my contract with the Sting. I'll never forget my first goal. You know, uh, and moments like that, I think I'll never forget, you know, when I came back and scored the first two goals with, with the fire, uh, yeah. you know, at uh, Soldier Field or, or even, you know, the one goal in the end, you know, when we won the, the Open Cup. It's just moments like that that you never forget. I'll never forget the moment that we shared last week that I shared with my coaches and my teammates when, when we won our, uh, when I won my first game with the team, you know. It, it's something that I expected, but moments like that, I mean, they're special that, that you never forget, and that's what I told the, the players also. Awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about heading to Greek Islands. Uh, <laughs> what do you recommend I get? Um, I've been there a couple times with you. But. Listen, you can't, you can't go wrong <laughs> with, with a, you know, I mean, I prefer uh, fish, you know, snapper or uh, the sea bass, you know, and then uh, just tell them that I send you and then, you know, they'll take good care of you there. All right. Thanks for your time. Just don't Frank. break any plates, you know. <laughs> I don't want to get the bill. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Frank. It's Frank Klobos with Touchline TV. On Saturday, July 23rd, the Chicago Fire are playing host to 19-time English Premier League champions Manchester United in the 2011 World Football Challenge. This is the second year in a row that the Red Devils have toured the United States in preparation of a 2012 Barclays Premier League season. Touchline TV caught up with the recently retired Manchester United legend Gary Neville at U.S. Cellular Field as Neville was polishing up his baseball skills at the Chicago White Sox game. Let's take a look at Neville's first pitch and a quick interview with Touchline TV. Yeah, I'm coming over here to promote the match, the Chicago Fire Manchester United match. Uh, it's going to be a great occasion. There's many tickets already sold, 50,000 people. And Manchester United love coming over here on tour to play in front of the American fans. And, you know, we're looking forward to this one more than ever because we have a lot to prove this season. So we went out for a team meal, I think, last time we came here. We went to Gibson's, a steak restaurant, and we had a great night. We always have a good night when we go out, but no, Chicago's a great city. The people are friendly, and we, we re received always really well here. Well, I'm actually more nervous than I would be playing soccer, to be honest with you. You know, probably 25,000 people, and I've got to throw this thing. And apparently, it's a bit of a shame if you hit the ground, so I'm, I'm going to aim high, hopefully. <laughs> Tickets are still available for the Chicago Fire Manchester United match at Soldier Field on Saturday, July 23rd at 4 p.m. For more information, call 888-MLS-FIRE or head to chicago-fire.com. 
That's going to do it for this month's edition of Touchline TV. I'm Brendan Hannon. We'll catch you in July.